Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ricky with Tackle Solutions and welcome to our beginner bootcamp. I have not done one of these in a really, really long time, but I thought again, it's Friday, the stock market is closed. So I thought that we can kind of like take this time to, especially for our beginners, uh, to create a criteria checklist. I'm gonna walk you guys through step by step. Uh, I created one for you, but I left a few open slots so you can add your own criteria. Um, and again, the goal is not like, okay, well, once you create this criteria, every single trade is going to be 100% successful. No, the whole point is for you to be more selective, right? And just to make sure that if you're anything like me and you've ever struggled with over trading, um, that this criteria checklist kind of helps you aid that, right? So I really hope that you learned something. I really hope that you enjoy it. And if you do, please consider dropping a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you feel like we earned it. I'm gonna start sharing my screen. And this is the checklist that we're going to be covering today. Um, it's one that I made uh, very quickly. It's just, again, um, to be able to provide us uh, with some details. I'll zoom in just so you guys can see everything that is. Um, I mean, can you guys see it okay? If I'm zoomed out like this, can you guys see the checklist fine? So it just talks about the trade checklist. And just like any other checklist, the whole point is for you to be able to, before you do something, check everything off of um, this list to, to qualify it as a trade worth trading right so um if you guys can see the live stream okay um let me know in the live chat so we are hosting this live i don't know if i'm going to do this on a weekly or bi-weekly or maybe just even once a month right we can host i host free live trading sessions kind of just like i did yesterday where you actually get to watch me trade live um but I, I haven't offered something like this for beginners and it's kind of more of a beginner boot camp. So you guys can see and hear me okay? Okay. And I'm just gonna make sure that this thing is popping up on my YouTube channel. It should be free and open to the public. I'm just making sure that it's not private. Um, okay, it shows that I am live. Yeah, so if it's not too much to ask, I would really appreciate you guys dropping a thumbs up um, and of course subscribing to the channel. You do have to be subscribed if you wanna partake in the live chat and you wanna ask me any questions. So um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna use NASDAQ for an example uh, for everything that we talk about today. Um, I don't care what it is that you you trade. I don't care what it is that you know your approach. I feel like NASDAQ is kind of just like that, that center line, right? Um, you can choose to be more aggressive. You can choose to be, well, kind of, I guess, more conservative. I don't know how you would get more conservative than NASDAQ. Um, but the issue that I want to help aid is over trading or taking trades that are just not of quality trades, right? Um, and this checklist will become available at techbudsolutions.com. It's going to be available probably after this live stream. So if you want to download it and you want to animate your own, great. But remember, this is just the concept, right? You can write it down on a piece of paper. The whole point is just like any other resource for you to actually use it. And if you don't put it into effect, and I know I can do a better job with this because everyone that's watching, that's part of my LPP, um, knows that again, I don't, from time to time, I do make mistakes where, you know, I don't wait for confirmation before a trade. I just buy the dip because I like the risk to reward ratios, but I don't follow everything in my checklist. And guess what? When you don't begin to follow everything in the checklist that you create, then you're simply putting yourself in just the riskier position. And if you can tolerate that, great. But then you can't be upset if the trade doesn't go according to plan, you end up losing money. And then you're like, well, I don't know what happened. Well, you do, right? You didn't follow your own checklist. I just wanted you to understand the why. The why this checklist can be valuable for someone that is just getting started. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is, is the market trending or consolidating? Can you guys let me know in the live chat? What do you think that means? Is the market trending or consolidating? And as you guys share, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you on my part, um, what this means to me. So is the market trending or consolidating? How many times have you taken a position right at market open because you think the market is going to be bullish or you think the market is going to pull on back yet the market does not have a clear direction for the day, right? The market could still be consolidating. And the whole point of this first question is to really ask yourself, do you know what, it, what you're about to trade it's true direction for that given day. Or 
if you're going in for a swing trade or for you know an, an investment do you know the true direction of that given stock for that given period so if you're going in for a swing trade obviously you're not going to look at the one minute time frame because you intend to hold it for more than just the number of days right so you're going to have to look at maybe the one hour the four hour to get a better sense of direction if you're going in for an investment then obviously you want to understand the true direction of that overall stock maybe the four hour the day chart the week chart right to get a true uh, perspective of that and what i mean by this is i want to show you a real world example so you know, market opens every single day, right? And when it does open, there's a lot of volatility, normally within the first 10, 15, 20 minutes. And you can see that the market was in the green and then all of a sudden it sells off and then all of a sudden it begins to pick up and then all of a sudden it begins to pull back down, right? So it takes, and, and it's very easy for us to look back and be like, okay, market's consolidating. But it took, you know, 30 minutes just to get here. It took two hours just to get here. Do you, do you get the understanding of that? It's like, we, we have this saying within our LPP team. It's give the market the time that it needs to paint its picture for the day. Because I know that I get so frustrated with myself when I force a trade right at market open, when I simply could have taken a step back, let the market paint its picture for the day, and then ask myself that one simple question. Is the market trending up? Is it trending down? Or... Is it consolidating? Because if it's consolidating, at least you can, you know, it doesn't mean that you can't trade it. If you're fine with trading it and it meets all of your other criteria, then great. But when something's consolidating, again, it's easier to be like, okay, this is the support that it's building for the day. This is the resistance that it's building for the day. I can buy the lows, sell the highs, buy the lows, sell the highs, buy the lows, sell the highs, right? And at least you have a, a different intention because you understand that simple question. Is the market trending up or down? or is the market consolidating? And I wanna show you an example of what trending up and down means um, or looks like. I don't know if we're gonna get it for NASDAQ. Um, oh, this is a good example. This is a market that was trending down. So although the market opened up, and I don't know if the market opened up green here, let me double check. Yeah, it did open, open up green because it gapped up. So it opened up green, but if you look at the actual price action, this thing was consistently selling off, right? Lower highs, lower lows, a consistent descending pattern. Although this stock opened up in the green, and we've talked about this many times, I do not care if a stock opens up in the green or in the red. All that matters is its progress. How is it trending? Is it trending up or trending down? And with this, it's much easier to see, okay, it is trending down. It's showing signs of a descending pattern with lower highs, lower lows, and there's consistent selling pressure. So it wouldn't make sense for me to go long on this, right? To buy and hope to sell for a profit, but maybe to potentially go short, meaning that I open short and then buy to cover at a lower price point. If you're a beginner, you probably shouldn't be shorting anyways. So just ignore that point. Shorting comes with time as, again, you have to have your risk management um, all set up. But does this make sense? Does the first one make sense? Are you going to, when you look at this on the checklist, are you going to be able to answer that question? Yes. Is the market trending up? Is the market trending down? Or is the market consolidating? Does that, does that make sense? Okay. So a very simple question that we always ask our LPP members is what is the risk to reward ratio? So what do we mean by that? Well, anytime that you take a trade, you have to have some idea of what you intend to make, right? So I want to give you an example with this. Um, I'm actually going to use coin as an example because I traded this yesterday, okay? And I announced it to my LPP team. So I'm going to bring it on over, the messages that I sent them, and I'm going to explain to you how you could calculate this. Okay, so this was yesterday and pretty much very simple. Coin back to 267, opening short again, 262. This was my second short. So pretty much this was where I wanted to open short. This is where I wanted to cover my short. So from 267 to 262, that was my goal. And then I uh, keep them up to date with my overall progress, with my overall position size, and then when I bought to cover, right? So from 267 to 262. 
So if you guys could see, right, this thing ripped up and then pulled on back, but then it ripped back up again. And as you can see, it was showing signs of that same previous resistance. I let it, I let it establish its range. So when it went back to retest, I understood that this was an overbought level. And then I waited for confirmation. I went in at 267 and then guess what? When it sold off, my goal was 262 based off previous patterns. But again, as I've said before, my goal is something to work towards, not something that has to go exactly according to plan. So from this overall price point of 267, if it would have gone to 262, obviously, you know, okay, I would have had a 2% uh, margin that I would have had to work with. So 2%, what would I have risked? This is where the ratios come in. And again, this is super, super important where it might not make sense if you're someone that, you know, has experience and you might be like, I feel like this is overdoing it. I feel like anything as a beginner, you, you, you almost need to overdo to implement and show a lot of structure, right? Uh, so the whole point of the risk to reward ratio is, okay, if I see that this thing has 2% potential of profit that I can make shorting it, then I need to make sure that my risk is significantly less. So if I go in at 262 and I understand that my goal is to cover at 26, uh, if I go in at 267 and my goal is to cover at 262, then I need to make sure that my risk, right? I, I mitigate that. So I keep it at less than 2%. Is that going to be 1%? Is that going to be half of a percent? Well, that's where you determine your risk to reward ratio. I've, I've, and I guess I can share, um, I can share that PDF as well. Um, I have a PDF that pretty much shows you the different risk to reward ratios and as well as the uh, success rate that you must have. So when it comes down to that, um, you can kind of determine of like, okay, if you have you know, a 33% success rate, a 40% success rate, a 50% success rate, uh, what your risk to reward ratios actually have to be. I actually think I'd be able to share it with you guys right now. Um, because why, why not? So, all right, all right. Okay. I think there's a Alyssa K. I don't know if you guys were seen. I think it's the same troll that, um, was offended. There's a guy that, you know, as I started shorting DJT, so the Donald Trump stock, there's people that have been getting offended and it, it baffles me. Like we're all here for the same reason I thought, right? We're all here to make money. And I think they're a perfect example of, you know, what not to be like um, when it comes down to, you know, it doesn't matter if you believe in Trump or whatever the case might be. It's a stock. It's a stock that's publicly traded and it was an overvalued stock. I saw an opportunity. I made $40,000 shorting it on Wednesday. And then overall yesterday, I made 17K, right? I showed it in the live stream. I went live. You got to see all of my trades, all of my entries, all of my exits. And it's just sad to see. Um, it's sad to see that someone has nothing better to do with their life than, um, I mean, I... I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like, I'm not the one that made you bag hold that stock and that's why you lost money. It's it's literally hilarious. It's like, if anything, if you really think about it, um, I was the one that talked about the risk behind it. So if you decided to hold it yourself, that's on you, buddy. So how much do you trade with? I trade with half a million dollars. All right, and I do not have the risk to reward ratios. I thought I had it on my phone, which I was gonna airdrop it, but that just means that I owe, owe you guys a risk to reward ratio um, cheat sheet. So pretty much all that's ever gonna talk about is making sure that any time that you take a trade, that your potential to profit always outweighs your potential to, to um, for risk, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the most important things um, to pay attention to when it is that you are uh, choosing to take a trade, that you understand that the potential to make money always outweighs um, the potential for you to potentially take a loss. So uh, that's what we what we mean by um, what is the risk to reward ratio. If you're about to take a trade and you're like, okay, I plan to buy here, right? I plan to, let's go back to NASDAQ. 
If you're about to take a trade and you're like, okay, I'm going to buy at, at um, $44.50 and I plan to sell at 45. Okay, well, what is that? You know, you can use the little trend line tool and very quickly at 40, 444.50 all the way up to highs of 445, it offers, you know, 0.13%. Okay, who cares, right? Well, what is the potential for you to lose money? Well, 0.18. So the potential to lose money is actually much greater for the potential for you to make money. So you can see that your risk to reward ratios are off. Normally, people want like a three to one ratio or to four to, or a four to one, four to one. Um, and I think that's the beautiful thing about, you know, setting up this structure is as a beginner, you want to make sure that you understand just these very simple and basic things because, again, the things that you often overlook because if you're anything like, you know, the average person, you just get very excited and very hopeful, kind of like all the Donald Trump um, stock bag holders. You know, they're like, oh, this thing's going to go to $100 a share, but they had no trade plan. They didn't understand the risk to reward ratio. I mean, we can truly use them as an example where if you look at this stock and you look at how overbought it is, okay, like let's say that you decided to buy here because your intention was to sell at $69. Okay, but the downside risk is significantly greater. So the risk to reward ratio just doesn't make sense, right? Anytime something becomes very overbought, you always have to take that into consideration. Okay, is my risk to reward ratio no longer in my favor? Is the risk out, outweighing the potential reward? Very simple question that uh, you can ask yourself. But again, it's these simple questions as you're about to take a trade that really can make a big difference. Uh, this one is one that I added because I just wanted you to be able to become familiar with grading the risk behind each trade based off of you calculating that risk to reward ratio and how that stock trades. I feel like this has become a little bit more relevant nowadays and you guys let me know what you think. You don't have to use it, but grade A would be like a grade A setup, like a, an ideal setup where, you know, it's an extremely bullish stock that's consistent over a long period of time and that it's not hyped up, right? Whatever the case might be for all, all for however it is that you grade that stock. Uh, grading a stock a C uh, would be pretty much like, you know, just a very risky stock. A stock that, you know, could be a pump and dump. Uh, the whole idea behind that is by you grading your own stock before you actually take that trade can then just give you a better understanding of the next question based off of how risky that stock is. So you can, you don't even have to use ABC. You can use it's you know, not very risky, or you can say it is risky or it's very risky, however it is that you want to grade it. But the whole idea is getting into the next question of what is my position size is super, super important. And what we mean by that is once you understand, okay, like let's say that I wanted to buy the dip on DJT. If I were to ask you, okay, is DJT a conservative stock? Is DJT a risky stock or is DJT a very risky stock? What would you say? What would you say based off of recent performance and how this thing went from $32 up to highs of $79 and then from 79 all the way back to 60? What would you grade this yourself? I think it would be common sense to be like, okay, it's a grade C. It's a very risky stock that could, yeah, very volatile. I think that's the best way to put it where it's just, it's obvious that it comes at a greater form of risk. And it's not to bad mouth DJT. It's just to understand that yourself because this is a trade that you're potentially about to take. So by understanding that it's a riskier stock, it doesn't mean that you have to avoid it. It just means that by respecting it as a riskier stock, I'm going to respect myself enough and size down on my position size. And that is why on the next question, we ask about position size. Um, it surprises me um, when people come from other groups or from other people that they watch on YouTube, um, how little people understand position size. Uh, when I trade something like DJT, um, you know, I try to stay under $100,000. Under $100,000 is about one fifth of my account size. So that means that I try to trade with less than 20% when it's a very, very risky stock. But what does that look like for you, right? If you trade with $10,000, then that means that your risky position in perspective to me and in, in respect to my ratios 
it shouldn't be more than $2,000 per trade. But do you do that? Do you respect yourself by respecting the stock with your position size? Do you get what I mean? Like if it's an ideal setup and it's an extremely bullish stock, you're very confident in it, like it's, it's consistent over a long period of time, I'm probably going to be naturally more confident to go in and add more size to that stock, right? Because maybe it's a grade A or not a very risky stock. So therefore, I'd be willing to risk more of my position size or maybe all of it, right? But if it's an extremely risky stock, I respect it by managing my position size. And position size management is single-handedly probably one of one of the most important things when it comes down to taking a trade because you can take a trade early but even if you manage your position size to five or ten percent you can easily tolerate that kind of volatility or that kind of risk because you manage your position size instead of always feeling like you need to go in with a hundred percent of your account size this is why it's so important to never be afraid to go in with maybe just a fraction or a portion to test the waters. And then if direction is truly in your favor, then you can dollar cost average into that actual position um, itself. So, all right. Okay. So it looks like Justin just updated the site. Let me double check this and make sure it's available. So we have the economic calendar here for you. Okay, so the trading checklist for beginners. This is at techbutsolutions.com. And then it should be available for you to download. So you can just right click this PDF and you should be able to download it. And then you also have the risk to reward numbers. Uh, so let me go ahead and download this myself. But this is the calculator. Okay, so this is going to be more of an Excel sheet if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah. So this is where you can just calculate your entry, your exit, where you plan to stop loss. And then this would calculate your risk to reward ratio. So, I mean, we could even plan it out. So if that's all right with you guys very quickly, um, let's use... Uh, what do we want to use as an example? Let's say that I want to, what do I want to go long on? Everything's so overbought. But let's let's just say in, in a made up world, um, NASDAQ was down here, right? NASDAQ was trading at lows of uh, 437. And my goal is to sell it back at 450. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this to QQQ. And again, you guys can all download this yourself. Uh, the entry would be uh, 437. And the exit goal would be 4, it was 449. So I'm just going to put 448. And then I'm going to plan to cut losses. Well, if there's a break of pattern, that means that it would have to break below this moving average and show signs of progress. I'd be willing to let it run down to um, 434. Okay, so four, three, four. Okay, and yep, so this thing is telling me that my risk to reward ratio is a 3.67, which means that I offer for every 1% of risk, there's 3.67% of upside potential. And in my opinion, that's a pretty solid risk to reward ratio where if I focused only on keeping those kind of ratios, I can lose, I can take two to three bad trades and I only need one good trade to go according to plan for me to still end up in the green. And ratios like this, when they're more in your favor, if they're anywhere from like the three to four to one ratios. Um, so where is that doc? Um, you guys can download it. Again, you guys can download the checklist and download the risk to reward ratio calculator uh, all on techbutsolutions.com. So it's free. Um, it's available. So again, techbutsolutions.com. You just scroll down and this boot camp should be right on over here. So and we also have the um, if you guys ever struggle with the economic calendar, we have the economic calendar that's provided for you on the actual site. Um, and that actually that should be getting into my next question. So uh, not my next one, the one after. Um, 
do I have a trade plan? So I guess we actually just covered that. So now that you have the risk to reward ratio, how many of you are going to have the excuse of, well, I don't have a trade plan, right? The, the idea of an entry, the idea of an exit, the idea of cutting losses. Now you're going to know your exact risk to reward ratio. And one thing that I actually want to add is, can I, I can't do it right now. Uh, but what I was going to add is I want you to be able to visually see. I think a big part on why beginners are so willing to take trades is, you know, you're looking at this 3.67, but you're also not looking at the dollar amount. The one thing that I'm going to be adding is I'm going to add three more tabs here. And what I'm going to add is how many shares you plan to buy. So your size. And then it's going to tell you if your trade goes exactly according to plan, how much money you could potentially make. But then also if your trade goes south and you manage your risk accordingly, where you plan to cut losses, how much you would potentially lose. And I think with that, once you begin to plug in all those numbers and you know your risk to reward ratio, you know your profit potential, you know your risk potential, I think visually, I want you to be able to see that before you actually take the trade. I think for a beginner, it's going to be very valuable. Yeah, I wanted to do it so it automatically calculates this. You just have to input where you plan to buy, where you plan to sell, where you plan to cut losses, and then how many shares you plan to buy. And then it will calculate your risk to reward ratio, your profit and your loss as expected. And I think it's just going to make it a lot easier for you to like, you know, if you see, okay, I'm about to take this trade. Let me just input this very quickly. Um, I always have a three factor rule when entering a trade. I love that, Rick. Um, but if you were to have this, I think it's just going to make you visually be able to see of like, oh, wow. This risk to reward ratio is not good and I do not want to take this loss. I'm just not going to take the trade at all. And I think at that point it would just begin to make more sense. So uh, I'm definitely going to update that and then I'll, uh, I'll have it provided for you guys probably an hour um, after this live stream is done. So we're almost pretty much done here. So an, after, an hour after we close out this live stream, this, um, I'll make sure that it's updated on this uh, trading checklist site at techbutsolutions.com. Okay. All right, let's move on to the next one. So we talked about the trade plan. If you do not have a trade plan, again, it's like that very simple saying. Um, if you have no plan, then that's a great plan to fail, right? Um, I, I, I do not understand how anyone, especially as a complete beginner, can go into a position so blindly. The amount of times that I've seen um, a number of people just take trades and then ask the question. I, I don't want to say I hate this question, um, but it's just very discouraging. When a beginner asks me, Ricky, where do you think I should sell? Or Ricky, where do you think I should cut losses? What? You took a trade and you had no understanding of that before you actually took it? Like that that's baffling, right? You, ha you have no structure with your trading, but that's the whole point of this checklist, right? It's, it's to identify, okay, there's, there's a mistake that I've been making and it's a mistake that I've made in the past before and I and even from time to time. Sometimes I do go into a trade blindly. But especially as a beginner, right? The goal is just to try to not make those same mistakes over and over and over again. And you're human. You're going to make them, but at least to have some systems in place to help aid that. And that's exactly the value behind a checklist or the value behind a trade plan is that you you are doing your future self a favor so you don't get put in that predicament. Just ask yourself a simple question. How would you feel now when you're about to take a trade and you plug all the numbers in and then you start to see how much you put, could potentially make, how much you could potentially lose all before you actually even take the trade? Do you feel like you're going to have a better understanding of what you're getting yourself into? Then great. That's the whole point. It's not that your trade is going to be, you know, successful 100% of the time. Nothing can can like perfect that, right? But at least you can make a more informed decision before actually taking the trade. And I think that's where the value is, right? By taking time and actually creating that that trade plan. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So uh, this is probably more important now than ever before. How many times do you guys ever ask yourself that question? Are there any economic reports being released that can impact my trade? How many of you guys have ever been screwed by taking a trade and then you're like, crap, the CPI data report 
just got released. Boom! Or boom, right? It drops. Or dang, Jerome Powell is about to speak, but I just entered my trade. I just wasted my day trade. Again, the whole point of this checklist is just to highlight based off of your history and, and you know mistakes that have been made to help aid them. It's never going to be perfect. There's always going to be the risk of an analyst sharing a report that could have never been anticipated. But guess what? This is just to help aid your trading. It's not to perfect it. Nothing will perfect it, right? But it's just to help aid. So that's why I thought that that was going to be a very useful thing to add to the checklist. Uh, and then the last one is the very simple and last question that I want to ask myself is, do I have confirmation to enter this trade? So after you go down that entire list, you know, do I understand which way the market's trending or is the market consolidating? What is my risk to reward ratio? What do I grade, you know, the risk behind this trade? A, B, C, or not very risky, risky, or very risky. Do I have a trade plan? Entry, exit, stop loss, and then you know exactly what it is that, you know, you're getting yourself into. Are there any economic reports being released? And then after all of that, do I have confirmation to enter this trade? Is direction in my favor? Do I have confirmation that when I enter that the price action is in my favor? All that stuff. Now, every time that you enter a trade, if you were to follow this checklist, you might be like, Ricky, man, I don't, well, then will I ever enter a trade? Because this seems like a lot of criteria for a stock to meet before I even take a trade. I feel like I'm going to be missing out on a lot of opportunity. The whole point of your checklist is to help you build your edge, right? To help you not over trade. And yeah, you will miss out on some trades that might go according to what you saw be your plan, but it is also going to help you avoid those trades that never were going to go according to plan. And that's the whole point. It's not about the what if it does go. It's about well, what if it doesn't. Remember, beginners are always so focused on trying to make money, but not focused enough and actually learning how to keep it. And that's the whole point of this video is to understand that with structure over a long period of time will get you much further than a hopeful trader that gets lucky from time to time, right? Helping build your edge. And of course, I left you um, a few open slots here, right? Three, you can add as many as you want. You can check some of mine out if you don't agree with some of the things in my checklist. The whole point of this checklist is for you to use it as uh, an example. I want you to build your own. And then if you have specific notes, Right. So someone brings up a really good point. Um, I sometimes exit early. How do I fix that? I don't think that there's anything wrong with exiting early. Um, as many of you guys have seen it that, you know, that watch me trade live uh, with my LPP team. Ask yourself a very simple question. Would you rather be someone that sells early or that someone that never sells at all? And that goes from green to red. They both suck, but one sucks a lot more. Right? Just think about all the people that jumped into a Donald Trump stock at highs of $70 and rode it all the way down to 60 but they were up. But guess what? They didn't sell. They didn't follow their trade plan and they didn't adjust. I think that's the thing that maybe I would um, update on this checklist on the notes is never be afraid to lock in profits. And you can write whatever notes it is that you want, right? When it comes down to your, you know, your notes for your risk to reward ratio of what that needs to be met to, Right? If you don't deal well with bearish or descending patterns, then only focus on ascending uptrend patterns, right? Uh, I mean, you can tweak this however it is that you want. But the idea, I mean, and even this, um, so how do I help aid that? If you really wanted um, to help aid selling early, I, n I never see selling early as a problem. But if you really wanted to like work on it, the one thing that I've shared with my LPP team is, one thing that I've taken and done is anytime that I'm at a resistance or getting ready to lock in profits, right? If I'm going long, I can reduce my position size. Instead of selling 100% early, I can sell 50 or 75%. And then I can leave 25% of my position, you know, in the market open. And if it continues to run up, then great. But then if it begins to pull on back, then I can close it and I've locked in most of my profit. I hope that makes sense. Um, Scale out. Yeah, never being afraid to scale out for sure. Uh, I find myself entering at peaks constantly. Um, I think that would just uh, come down to, you know, 
asking this first question. So is the market trending up or down? And then when you calculate your risk to reward ratio, you have to establish a support and resistance. And if you see that you're entering too close to a previous resistance range, then obviously your ratios are going to be way off and that should hold you back from even taking the trade. So I think it's just by understanding oversold and overbought levels, support and resistance levels that you can make a more informed decision with your ratios to be like, hey, is this even worth it to take the trade? So again, timing is everything when it comes down to the market. And that's what I've learned. Um, the, the one thing that I really began to realize is that I've had days where I spend hours in front of the market. Hours doesn't yield you a greater return. It's all based off of timing and opportunity, right? I've had days where even yesterday within my free live trading session, I made 2,200 bucks with a relatively much smaller position size with 20% 20 per, 20 of what I normally trade with. I did it live. Feel free to watch it. This is the part that baffles me of like when people say like, um, that Ricky, we want to watch you trade live before we sign up for LPP. I just hosted a free live trading session yesterday. Watch the first 15 minutes. You see me enter a trade. I was shorting DJT and I made 2,200 bucks. Very grateful for it. It wasn't, I mean, it, I'm very grateful for the 2,000 bucks, but I did that within 18 minutes. I've had days where I can watch the, you know, market all day and I take no trades. And it's not that well, I did something wrong that day. It's that, again, just opportunity didn't present itself that day. I've also had days where, like with DJT, I, I have a very successful day and I can walk away with $40,000 in the green. Note, I do trade with half a million dollars. So that's roughly about like a 9% return. But nonetheless, it's all based off of opportunity and timing. It's not based off of I show up every day and I deserve to make money. It's, you don't deserve anything in this market. You earn it. And it doesn't make sense based off of the hours that you put in, but it's based off of the opportunities that you choose to take advantage of with the skills and systems that you understand. And that's the beautiful thing about this market. It is not based off of your hours that you allocate to work, but it's based off of the opportunity and just timing. But by building your trading checklist, you're just making sure that your edge is in your favor, making sure that you avoid trades that could put you in harm's way, at least most of the time. They can't. It's not going to ever stop you 100%, but most of the time. All right. So so any advice for a beginner that with smaller accounts that don't have enough uh, money to short or buy shares on larger companies? My, my thing, and again, this is what I want to end it with. Um, also, uh, Justin did update me that uh, on TechBud Solutions, I think it is updated. So techbudsolutions.com, it's on the first one, the trading checklist. Um, yep. So a trading check, uh, checklist PDF, they can now download it there. And then uh, risk to reward ratio, you can now download it there. So uh, this is all available on techbutsolutions.com on the first tab. But pretty much the thing that I want to leave you with is um, I feel like beginners are always so focused because of their account size. They're like, but Ricky, I, I'm not, you know, I can't trade the same thing you can or like I'm not making the same amount of money as you. Well, like duh, right? Like your focus shouldn't be the making money part. And I know that's very tough and challenging because maybe some of you are in a position where you need to make money right now, but I've said it many times. Anytime someone messages me like, Ricky, I need to make money right now. Should I get into trading? I say, no, I'm, I'm very blunt. I'm very straightforward. If you've ever asked me that question, you know how I've answered it before. It takes time to just even understand what to do and what not to do. You, I don't care if you're trading with, with a hundred bucks, a thousand bucks. It, it doesn't matter. When you're getting started, focus on the learning part. Once you build your good trading checklist, your good edge, your good understanding of the market, then at that point, naturally, just like when you prove it to yourself, you're going to find a way to be able to like save enough money to then fund your trading account more money, right? But you need to prove it to yourself. You don't just have to, oh, I'm going to start with 500 bucks and I just need to continue to make that. Well, no, I mean, you can make money in other areas and then use that to fund your account, but you need to make sure that you have a good working system first, right? And that's the thing that I want to make sure that you guys understand is that before any of that, you need to understand what you are doing and you need to prove it to yourself that you can be successful with this. So build your checklist. Again, this is just a concept. Build your own checklist, practice it, 
and do it until it makes sense. And if you get to a point where you're like, hey, this really isn't making sense to me, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to answer any questions you guys might have. You guys can feel free to send me a DM via Discord or via Instagram um, about issues or problems that you are actually testing. But the part that really baffles me, the part that really discourages me is that you're asking questions on things that you haven't even practiced or actually tried to show progress of. Remember, it's progress, not perfection. You will never be perfect with this. Your entries and your exits will never be perfect. But if you are someone that writes down, I want to take profits here, I want to manage risk here, but you don't manage risk there, then I don't want to hear you crying to me of, Ricky, well, I keep taking bad trades and I'm losing more than what I anticipated. Well, why are you losing more than you anticipated if you set up your trade plan, but you're not following it with proper execution? A lot of the mistakes that people make are human error. They're making their mistakes because they get too emotional or they're inability to hold themselves accountable. All I ever ask you to do is whatever you write down on that checklist, follow it for your sake, right? Not for me, not for someone else, for your sake. And if you're not going to follow it, then don't write it down because I don't want to hear you complain about my checklist is not working. Well, again, over a long period of time, it should be, right? It's not going to work every single time. Nothing is. But over a long period of time, you should be seeing what you are doing wrong and then adding it to your checklist to then better prepare you for that next trade setup. And I really hope that that makes sense. Yeah, there's a thing called OCO brackets. We break it down in LPP, uh, which pretty much means that one cancels the other. There's a limit order um, to sell, and then there's a stop limit to cut losses on. So the risk reward calculator does not open in Excel or what? Uh, it does. I think, I don't know if Justin has it set up to open up as a CSV file. Uh, but it's under numbers, which I think he might have to export as Excel to make it compatible with everyone else that doesn't have a MacBook. But thank you again for letting me know. So do you ever see yourself revenge trading after a loss? Damien, yes. I'm human, right? All the mistakes that you make, I've made them in the past before and I still make them from time to time, right? So there are times that like, and my LPP team gets to see this. And this is why I think, again, it's so valuable for them to be able to tune on into the lives where... Um, there's, there's moments where I'm just either more emotional, right? I'm kind of like a Reddit trader at that point. Um, and I'm just trying to make my money back and digging myself into a deeper hole. Um, but that can be something that you write down in your notes. It's like, hey, have, have structure set in place where if you hit your max dollar loss, you just, you're done trading for that given day. And you just have to come back with a fresh mindset and make sure that your next trade actually meets your trade criteria. So it's just kind of like, really checking on yourself, making sure that you're performing to the best of your ability. And if you're not, and you're not going to follow your rules, then simply don't take that trade. But again, ev everyone, everyone has those moments. Everyone has those, um, you know, uh, mistakes that they make over and over again. Uh, the whole point is not that you're never going to make them, but just to help aid the number of times that you actually do make them. So, um, yeah, this actually went a little bit longer than what I expected. I don't know how long we've been live, but um, yeah, you guys let me know what you guys think about this um, bootcamp. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, uh, most importantly, I hope that for at least a few of you beginners out there that tuned on in and actually took the time, I really hope that when you download that checklist, it's something that makes sense to you that you actually hold yourself accountable. You can write it on a piece of paper. You can have it on your laptop. You can have it on your phone. I do not care. But the biggest thing that I want you to understand is the only thing that separates a good trader and a bad trader is a good trader follows his rules and a bad trader makes excuses on why he didn't follow his. That is the only difference. And it's going to take time for you to come up with your rules. But as you make these mistakes, the whole point is for you to be proactive and update your rules so you don't make those same mistakes over and over and over again. Okay? I really do appreciate your guys' time. I hope that I earned your thumbs up. And again, I want to remind you, if you want to tune on into my live trading session and join my LPP team, it's a one-time payment, lifetime access. You don't have to join, but if you want the ability to watch me trade live every single day, especially if you're an absolute beginner, we're offering you a 50% off discount and it's the second link in the description down below. And if you have any questions before signing up, shoot me a DM via Discord or via Instagram and would love to answer it for you. Also, don't forget our Corvette giveaway is ending in April and right now we're offering you 2,000 bonus entries for all Aluminum Art. Just feel free to check it out, especially if you want to enter for your chance to win. I'd love to hand one of my subscribers the keys to that Corvette C8 or $50,000 cash. 
but you need to enter. So again, fourth link in the description down below. And Justin just posted that the Excel is now live on, uh, live on the site, which means that anyone that doesn't have a MacBook uh, can actually download that um, risk to reward calculator. So uh, I appreciate your time. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take care too.